Hey there, Fletcher Mullthings Overlanding here. On today's episode, um, as you may have seen in the last weeks or heard on the podcast last week, um, I have ordered a 2022 Ford Maverick. I'm super, super excited about it. It's such a cool little truck. I've always been a Nissan person, right? So I do feel a little reticent to say I'm just not as excited. There's just nothing that Nissan's offering right now that's super exciting. I do like the new Frontier a lot, but it's kind of a reskinned 2021. Um, and it's way more expensive, right? That, the Ranger, all those mid-sized trucks are way more expensive than this Maverick, and I already have a Frontier, right? So in addition to the Frontier, I am picking up this Maverick. So today I wanted to kind of walk you through, I'm gonna share my screen and everything, and kind of flip back and forth to show you, but if you are looking for something like the Maverick or if you're interested in the Maverick, I'm gonna kind of walk you through the order screen. I'm gonna walk you through how I made my decisions for how I outfitted it for a truck that I think will be a really nice little like sort of soft rotor overlanding vehicle. Um, so again, on this episode, I'm gonna walk you through that whole process. I'm gonna to talk to you about my thought process. Even if you're not particularly interested in them, it's a really cool truck with some cool features that I'll kind of talk you through. Um, so I think there'll be some good information here for you. So let's get into the 2022 Ford Maverick and how I ordered it to then outfit for overlanding. All Things Overlanding is brought to you by some fantastic companies. You should definitely check out the description and click through their links to see all the awesome stuff they offer. Companies like Red Arc for all your overlanding power management needs. Last US Bag, tons of amazing quality overlanding bags. Rugged Bound Supply Company, rooftop tents, awnings, roof racks, and more. And Northology Overland, guided overlanding trips and a free overlanding magazine. All right, guys, so as I mentioned, today I'm talking about the 2022 Ford Maverick. I have one on order. It's been on order for a few weeks now. Um, so I'm hopeful that in the next couple months, maybe I'm going to hear something and I'm going to get it. Um, they are so backed up and they have so many orders that you're talking three to four months right now if you order one before you get it. There are occasionally some that hit lots, but generally the dealers are marking them up four to eight thousand dollars above MSRP, which is a little crazy. Um, some are as much as fifteen grand, but I mean, I saw one on a, a forum, a Facebook group the other day that was like fifty-one thousand dollars, and I'm like, that defeats the whole purpose. This is a twenty to thirty-five thousand dollar truck. It's that's what the allure of it is, is that you get this cool little usable truck with a lot of really cool tech for not a lot of money, right? Um, so I ordered mine. I'm just going to be patient. I'm going to wait. Um, but so again, today I'm going to kind of walk you through. I will put a link down in the description to this page that I'm on where you can kind of check out the Maverick, learn more about it, you know, build one and sort of play with it and, and look at the pricing and all that sort of stuff. Um, so if you want to check that out, feel free. But, you know, just kind of walking down the page here, you know, it starts at $19,995. And that is for the XL model, which comes with, by default, front wheel drive and a hybrid motor, a hybrid drivetrain. 2.5 liter with a hybrid motor, electric motor on it, and a CVT. CVTs aren't my favorite. I don't love CVTs. And I also wanted all wheel drive and I wanted the FX4 package and a little more grunt in case I would need to tow something like a small trailer at some point. Um, but so still really, really cool. Like if you're just looking for something to get around town, it's smaller, it's easier to park than a big, huge truck. I know with my Frontier with the big swing out on the back and the quad cab and everything, it's pretty long. Compared to my Xterra, it feels really, really long. Um, and it's kind of a pain to park. Sometimes I'm crooked in a spot and I'm like, oh, I don't want to be that guy. Let me back it up and fix it here quick. Um, the Maverick, though, seems really maneuverable and small, which I love. I think it's a good-looking truck. I, you know, I mean, as much as I am a Nissan loyalist, and I love Nissan, and I will always love Nissan, and I will probably always own Nissans, I'm really intrigued by this Ford truck. And, I, you know, I hate to say it, but they've totally hooked me on this. And compared to, I mean, I'm looking at used vehicles compared to this when I made this decision. This is a better value by far. Like, it's just a steal of a deal. So super excited to get a Maverick here before too long. But again... Starts at $19,995, seating for five, they're all four doors, they're all quad cab trucks by default. That's a cost saving measure, but it also is really practical and, and usable. I have a family of four, you know, myself included, obviously. So that's really nice that I can throw the kids in the back and, and the wife up front and we can have a comfortable, you know, car ride to the store or soccer or whatever. Um, it will hold up to 1500 pounds in the bed, which is, seems more than reasonable to me. Um, and you know, if you get like a base model and just bought the truck, payments, for leases start at like 274 a month. So I mean, again, no brainer. You're gonna save so much on gas versus like a midsize or a full size truck anyways, that that's pretty cool. So when you get down here, you can see that there is, you know, there are different models, right? So there's the XL, which is the base, which actually comes with these really cool looking steel wheels. Actually, a lot of people are saying they really like the steel wheels. The XLT, which is the trim that I went with, and I'll tell you why here in a, in a minute. And then there's the like fully loaded Lariat version. 
That's the up trim. Get you a lot of like safety features and things like that. So if that's what you're looking for, that may be a good option. I personally don't like a lot of the nanny stuff. Like it kind of drives me crazy. I kind of like the XL truck, but I wanted I wanted the all-wheel drive and I wanted the FX4 package and I wanted the 2.0T and some of the some of the features that come with it, right? So like the XLT with the luxury that I got has a heated steering wheel, heated cloth seats, really sharp interior. I like the orange accents and stuff that come in the XLT. So, you know, there's there's tons of stuff in there and there are tons of videos. If you look on YouTube and search for Maverick, you're going to find tons of stuff. Um, so I won't rehash all that stuff in this video, but I went with the XLT. So when you're looking at it, the XLT starts at just over 22 grand. So again, really, really reasonable, right? Where they kind of get you a little bit on the money is... In order to get all-wheel drive, you have to go to the upsized engine. So you have to go up from the hybrid powertrain to the 2.0T motor, which again, I wanted. I wanted a little bit more grunt. It's got about 250 uh, horsepower and about 277 pound-foot of torque. So it's a torquey little motor. It's the 2.0T that is in a few of their other vehicles. This vehicle is based off the Ford Escape, which is a good platform, right? But this seems to perform a lot better than that from the videos that I've seen. Again, not a lot of people have even driven these things, some like automotive journalists and stuff. So you really just have to kind of watch YouTube videos at this point, or if you're lucky enough to find one on a dealer's lot that you can check out, then you could drive one. I have not driven one. I ordered one of these trucks, never driven one. Um, but so here is kind of how I outfitted mine. Let me go to build and price. So I'm gonna show you guys how I built mine out. So when you get to the builder, this is what it looks like. You know, all over that Maverick page that I have linked below, you're gonna see build and price, right? So when you click on that, it takes you to this starting page where you can pick XL, XLT, or Lariat. And you wanna pick whatever makes the most sense for you, right? Um, you can get an XL with the two liter EcoBoost engine. I went with XLT because I wanted some features, right? Like I'm coming from an Infinity. So I previously had an Infinity, and then I've got a big lifted armored up Titan swapped uh, Frontier on 35 inch tires. So I wanted something that had some nice features and I figured if I'm getting it new, I want something that's in the middle. I Again, I didn't need all the stuff that's on the Lariat, so I went with the XLT. Um, I checked this box here to go with the two liter EcoBoost engine for more horsepower, more torque, and I wanted all wheel drive. Then you click start your build. Um, you know, they start you with colors. There are a ton of colors and I've got a buddy that he actually ordered his back in June of 2021. Um, and it's scheduled to be delivered to him in January. And he said, you know, he spent a ton of time the last six months watching all these forums, watching for updates and stuff. A lot of people are going with this Area 51 blue because it's it's a gorgeous color. I really like it, but it's very popular. So you're going to see it around a lot. I like to be a little different. I think his is the hot pepper red, and I think his might be a first edition. There is a first edition that gets you a sunroof and some other unique things that you can only get on the first edition. I'm not as familiar with that because... I didn't get a first edition. I'm, I'm too late. I waited too long. But what I ended up going with is this cactus gray color. I just think it's a really sharp color. Kind of reminds me of Area 51, but gray, right? Instead of the sort of like, I don't know what to call it, like that like primary kind of gray. But I just think there's something really cool about it. I just think it looks nice. So I went with the cactus gray, personally. They've got all kinds of colors. They've got a bright yellow. They've got a white. I really liked the white and black look too. I kind of wavered on the white. But then I went with the cactus gray because it's just a little bit different than just white. Um, and then you get down here and they kind of go through like what's included, right? So with the XLT package, you get the painted grill, gray grill bar, which is nice. Just gives it a little bit classier look. Um, Navy pier and medium slate interior with orange accents. That's part of the XLT too, which I really like. It's kind of quirky. So, you know, it may not be to your liking. If not, look at the other trims. Um, for me, this made a lot of sense. You know, you get power mirrors, you get a power locking tailgate, which I really like because if I've got gear back there and some sort of a tonneau cover at some point or maybe a cap, I'm not sure how I'm gonna go with, with the build yet. Um, but you can just, when you lock up the, the truck, it's gonna lock the rear tailgate so nobody can be messing with your stuff, which is nice. Um, it has cruise, of course, it has the flex bed, which this is a huge feature and I'll just touch on it briefly here, but again, I don't wanna beat a dead horse. There are a ton of videos out there if you really wanna go into depth of all the different features and stuff that are on these trucks. Um, check that out. Again, the point of this video is to show you how I built mine and why I built it that way, specifically with the goal, the end goal being light overlanding and like daily driver use. Um, but the flex bed is really cool. It has a bunch of tie downs. The XLT also comes with the like spray in bed liner on it, which is really nice for me. Like I just wanna protect the bed um, for long term. Um, then I did check down here for packages. I checked the FX4 off-road package and here's why. 
So with it, you get a unique blacked out 17 inch aluminum wheel. I don't care about that too much, but it does look nice. I like it. You get all-terrain tires. They're, again, they're pretty small. They're not, they're just barely all-terrain tires. I'm gonna probably lift it and put some sort of aftermarket wheels and like 31 inch tires on it. That's kind of my goal, about a two inch lift and 31 inch, probably RT tires, probably go with the Kenda uh, Cleaver RTs that I really liked before on this truck. Um, you do get, you know, the the, six and a half inch productivity screen and instrument cluster. What that means is, so they all come standard with like a, I think it's an 8.4 inch uh, touch screen in the middle with CarPlay and, you know, connectability, Android Auto, all that stuff. Um, but then in the actual cluster on the lower model trucks, you just get like a little tiny smart screen and then like uh, analog gauges. With this, you get a bigger screen with more customizability and more ways to sort of change up your, your instrument cluster, which is pretty cool. Um, you get exposed front tow hooks. I mean, again, until they come out with a bumper or something, my goal is to keep this as stock as possible for a while. I don't plan on putting a big bumper on it and winches and all that stuff. I don't want to load it down with a bunch of weight because it is a little 2.0T motor. Um, but I like that I have some hooks on the front. So if I do do something stupid, I'm going to be with a buddy probably anyways. They could tow me out with their winch. That's kind of the plan. Um, it does come with the decal on the bed, which whatever. I mean, I'll, I, I'm not a Ford guy historically, but I understand that that's a cool thing to have the FX4. So it's nice to have that. Um, it does have hill descent control, which I've seen a few videos and it seems to do a pretty passable job. I don't know if I'll use that or not, but it's it's just cool to have. It'd be pretty nice to have some assistance if you're going down like a steep hill. Um, you do get some additional drive mode. So, you know, it's a smart truck. These are technologically advanced trucks. It's a 2022 model. Um, with the normal XL, you don't get the sand and mud and ruts mode so it has these two additional modes and I need to learn more about that again I'm not going to go super deep into that there are some videos that do that that talk about exactly what happens with like breaking certain wheels and pushing power from one side to the other um, I'm not going to dive super deep into that but I, I would rather have more options than less options right so I like that um, they do come with these sort of light duty skid plates but again I'm just looking at this truck as a gravel road, you know, sort of longer trip, but with less, like if I did the Trans-Wisconsin Adventure Trail, for example, it's mostly sand and gravel. It's not anything super challenging, not anything super rocky. I'm not really worried about any of that stuff. It'll just be nice to have some protection under the truck and a little bit, you know, higher uh, ground clearance on the, on the FX4. And again, I'm going to put a lift on it. And then it does come with a trailer hitch receiver, which is really nice. Um, I did not go for the 4,000 pound package. I'm kind of regretting that a little bit now. I will say it because it gives you some additional transmission cooling and things like that and a different gear ratio. Um, so I am kind of wondering about that. So you may want to, you know, if you ever think there's something you're going to tow, I was just thinking I'm not really going to tow anything more than a couple thousand pounds probably ever with this truck because I would just tow it with my bigger truck anyways. Um, but there are some benefits for overlanding, like the transmission cooler, the, the different gear ratios that give you a little bit more torque and stuff like that when you're off-road. So it may be worthwhile to do that whether you're going to tow or not. I'm just throwing it out there. I didn't do it because it was about 800 bucks, I think, 700 and some bucks. Um, but it may be, that may be a good thing for overlanding if you're thinking about that. You still, though, with the FX4 package, get a heavy-duty engine cooling fan and a heavy-duty radiator. So you get some upgrades with the FX4 package. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you can't get that with the hybrid or the first edition package. So that's kind of interesting. I think the first edition may have some FX4 stuff on it already. But so that's the big bump up here is this, this package is only $800, but you also have to pay like $3,300 for the, the 2.0T motor, and you have to pay for all-wheel drive. Um, then the XLT luxury package. So I also sprung for this and, and here's why there's a few reasons. So, um, this gets you an eight way power driver's seat and a six way manual passenger's front seat, which is nice. I mean, I don't really care about that too much, but if my wife hops in it and moves stuff around, it's easier to get it, you know, situated the way that you want and get more comfortable more easily. Um, a big thing for me was it comes with a 400 watt, 110 volt inverter. Um, you get one in the cab and you get one in the bed, which is really, really cool. Um, you also get a USB in the rear console. So like for my kids, if they want to charge something, they can plug in there or they can plug in AC. So like I could run a fridge off that if I wanted to or or run a little coffee maker or something like that off the, the, the built-in inverter. So that's really cool. Um, you also get in the back tie-down uh, locking rails, which is really nice. They're kind of like adjustable. It's like a quick movement. You kind of turn them and move the, the tie downs to where you want and then lock them back in place. So it gives you more functionality, more adjustability. There is a way though, they have some really cool things where they've made this bed super versatile. 
where there's a QR code in the code in the bed that you can scan and it will give you ideas for like how to use Unistrut to basically build something really similar to that system. Um, that wasn't the main reason I bought it. It was just an additional thing, um, but it's just nice. It's nice, it's already in the truck. I don't have to build anything. It gets you the spray and bed liner, which is really nice. I mean, $2,345 for this package, but I mean, a spray and bed liner is fairly expensive anyways. You get a full size spare included. Um, which is nice, just instead of a, a little donut, you get a full size spare. So for me, again, if I happen to puncture a tire or pull a valve stem out or something while I'm off-roading, I've got a full size spare, I can just keep going. Um, you get heated mirrors with body color covers on them, but heated mirrors are nice, you know? I mean, that, I've had these basic, basic sort of built up trucks for a long time. It's kind of nice to just turn on the defrost and watch your mirrors clear up, you know? So that's nice. You also get heated cloth seats, which I think is super cool. I, I have a, a seat heater thing that's like a cover for my Frontier that I put in the truck that's aftermarket that plugs into a DC plug that takes up one of my plugs. These are just built in. I love that. I go camping in the winter a lot. It's just going to be nice if I'm you know on a short little overnight trip on a gravel road and I camp somewhere for the night to hop back in the truck, turn on my heated seats and warm my butt. Um, you get remote start with this thing, which is really cool, right? Like I'm, I don't have that on my Frontier. So that's just a really nice feature in the winter and stuff. If, you, if you're at camp, right, and you start to pack up your tent and stuff, boom, just hit that remote start. Truck starts up, starts to defrost everything, heats up for you. So when you get in, it's already warm. You don't have to go over and start it. You can just do the remote start. Um, you do get a leather wrapped heated steering wheel. That's cool too. My Infinity had a heated steering wheel. That's the only car I've ever had with it. Now this little truck has a heated steering wheel. Just a really nice sort of thoughtful thing. Not a huge expense probably for Ford, but something that's really cool to say, my little truck has a heated steering wheel and I like the heated steering wheel. I've, I used it all the time in my car. Um, it also has built-in LED box lighting. So that's really cool. And the bed of your truck, now it's gonna have built-in LED lighting. So again, if I'm using it as a, like a bed platform, if I've got gear back there, you know, there's just some additional lighting, which is really, really cool. And then it also has a windshield wiper de-icer, which is pretty cool. I don't exactly know how that works. I'm curious to find out how that works, but it's pretty cool that it's gonna, you know, defrost my windshield wipers for me. So anyways, so that to me seems like a pretty good package. It is a big chunk of change. So you wanna think about whether those things are worth it for you. Again, I was kind of coming from an infinity down, I guess, if you will, to the Maverick. Although really, I don't feel like I'm making a lot of sacrifices. Um, this Ford Copilot 360, I did not get, cause again, those are sort of the electrical nannies that kind of tell you if someone's beside you and that sort of thing. Um, I just, that isn't an allure for me, so I could save over 500 bucks, so I didn't do that. And again, the, the 4K tow package is 745. Probably if I had it to do again, I would probably just pay that extra money just to have it just in case, just to get the additional things. Like I mentioned, you get, um, you know, a transmission oil cooler, seven pin connector, you can get some bigger tires, I think, on a transmission oil cooler, I said, higher capacity radiator, upgraded cooling fan, upgraded drive ratio, and a trailer brake controller, which is really cool. Um, so again, I didn't do that on my build, it saved me almost a thousand bucks, so I felt pretty good about it, but um, anyways. So then the, the XLT comes with these blacked out wheels, which is fine. You've got your tires. These This is a little confusing to me, because if you click on this, it, it gives you like an error sometimes. When you do this, it says you have to add, you know, all this stuff and remove these things. And I'm pretty sure that I have the 235s on my truck, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, and then going down, there's just tons of interior options. So, you know, go nuts, have fun here. I don't generally buy the factory stuff. Even though you can finance it in, that's a benefit. The downside is you're going to pay a lot more, right? Like if you buy the Ford Tonneau cover, it's almost 1200 bucks. So... I'm probably going to wait and look at some aftermarket options. I may look for like a, a cap or something like that. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to go with the bed yet. But I mean, if you want window air deflectors for 120 bucks, you can do it. So there's just tons of stuff going down through here that you can play with. You can get crossbars for the bed, but they're $800, right? So again, up to you, but do with that as you will. They have some pretty cool stuff like roadside assistance kit, first aid kit for 40 bucks. Um, Another cool thing about the interior of this cab is they have this thing in the back where it has this sort of clip built into it and you can, they, they're actually going to give out instructions for how you could 3D print stuff like a cord holder or a cup holder, that kind of stuff. Or you can buy the accessories from them for about, I think it's like 50 bucks a piece for those um, things. So anyways, you can buy all that stuff or you could, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you can customize yourself, which I'm really excited to check that stuff out. Um, the XLT does come with six speakers, AM, FM radio. 
again, I'm I'm probably gonna leave the radio alone because it's CarPlay. That's what I use. I'm an Apple guy. I have uh, you know um iPhone 12, so I'm going to plug in through the CarPlay and use that all the time probably. I am probably going to upgrade the speakers at some point. I've heard they're not the best. I'm going to wait and see how they are. I'm not going to be in a huge rush for that, but I will probably be pulling that apart and replacing those speakers and probably adding like an under seat small little subwoofer just to add some punch to the sound system. Um, I went 2 liter EcoBoost engine. I went all wheel drive, which is a pretty big uh, bump in price there too. But again, my build came out to about 30,700 bucks. So XLT, 2.0T, all wheel drive, FX4 package, luxury package, that's it. That's what I did. Um, so that is basically my build, right? So my build again came out to about 30,700 bucks. Um, I'm really happy with it, I'm super excited about it. I feel like that's a really good mix. I feel like that gets you plenty of stuff that you would need to go overlanding in most situations. Like again, unless you're rock climbing in Moab or doing some really super crazy stuff in the Ozarks or something like that, you could do most of the stuff that I've done in my life in this truck. Um, so if you're into that soft roader style, if you just wanna go out and explore and hit up your local national forest, I feel like this is a great option. So many like, I mean, the MPGs are crazy. Mid 20s, average MPGs, 27 on the highway for the 2.0T motor is fantastic. The maneuverability of the truck, you know, the all wheel drive system is fine for most gravel applications, most off roading stuff that's not super crazy. Um, so, again, I'm super excited to build this thing. So, I hope that if you're here again for the first time because you saw Maverick and, and all of us Maverick guys and girls are super excited about them, you wanted to see some content on that. I hope that that was helpful for you. And I hope that if you don't know what overlanding is, check out some of my other videos on the channel because you can learn about that. It's basically just exploring, right? Like being dependent on your vehicle and going out and finding camp spots and living out of your vehicle basically for a night or two nights or a week or whatever you want to do. Um, so anyways, I'm super excited to bring you some more Maverick content on that, some do-it-yourself stuff, some modification stuff, some how-to videos will definitely be coming. Um, so if you're in for that, definitely hit that subscribe button, click the bell to be notified when new videos drop. Um, check out the description down below to hang out on Facebook, Instagram. I've got a podcast that I do about overlanding in general every week. Um, there's also a Patreon page. So again, tons of cool, like my, my sort of target i guess is newbie overlanders people that are just learning about getting out and exploring and camping out of their vehicles um, and budget-minded do-it-yourself type stuff weekend warriors right like we all work full-time jobs we've got families we can't get out you know for months at a time we can't go full-time and just like leave our jobs and go uh exploring but we can maybe do it for a night or two on a weekend so if you're into that stuff, check out the Patreon page. And then last but not least, there's a newbie overlander Facebook group that is specifically targeted at folks that are new to this. You're not going to get made fun of if you ask a stupid question. We're going to try and help you out. I've got some experienced overlanders in there, and then I've got some a bunch of newbie overlanders, right? So there'll be a lot of good information if you search within that, that Facebook group that you can find without even having to ask a question, right? Um, so definitely check that out as well. But so that is it for the episode this week. Thank you guys for watching on YouTube. Thanks for listening on the podcast. Appreciate you. Um, Again, check out those links in the description below, and we'll see you next week.